Today, we're headed on a tour of the Idaho National Laboratory facility that fuels and tests power systems for deep space missions. Steve Johnson, director of INL's Space Nuclear Systems and Technology Division, guides our tour. This is uh, one of two buildings that constitute the Space and Security Power Systems Facility. And our most recent effort here was building a nuclear material powered radioisotope power system for Mars Science Laboratory. This is the non-nuclear portion of the facility. We're going to go through a breezeway here in a moment and we'll go into the nuclear portion of the facility where we handle well encapsulated nuclear material that goes inside our space power systems. In this glove box behind you here, we take the heat sources from Los Alamos. This is a one-to-one -one replica of that ceramic with the iridium. And this would weigh about 150 grams. It's actually about 200 grams with the iridium. And it would put out 60 to 62 watts thermal. And what you want to do there is that you take and you build up your module. Take your heat source. Now, this is going to be 900 degrees C. So you're going to handle this with a pneumatic handling device. This is called a graphite impact shell. It's about the size of a salt shaker. This is a picture when you take four of those and put it into a module. You can see a picture of a module in a container there. This represents the output of one 10-hour shift, building one of these. You need a total of eight of these for the power system that we're sending to Mars. So once we get these built, we will then go to the second step, which is we take them over here to the big glove box. The uh, glove box behind you is very specialized. This is a 12-inch thick water window that you'd be looking through. And you can see this device here that looks like a tower. That's exactly the right height you need to put eight of those, stack them all up. You lift it over the bore of the radioisotope power system, and you lower it down in, then you take your tool out. Believe it or not, all that stuff that I just described in 30 seconds takes four to six weeks to accomplish. Then you put the top on the casing and seal it up. You get that all buttoned up, you make certain it's leak tight, and you've got a functioning power supply at that point in time. You still need to do the testing on it and everything, but it's putting out electrical power then. You take it right out here, out the vestibule door, and we have a specialized cart that we use to move it around. Once you get it out here, you're going to do radiation readings on it so that you know what kind of field your workers are in. And then you're going to go into your acceptance test. Why don't we go down there? Okay, this, uh, this room houses the vibrational test table. The table rides on a granite slab on a film of oil. It goes back and forth. This head can operate from five to 5,000 hertz, maximum amplitude of one inch. Its purpose is to simulate the vibrations the rocket would induce on the power system when it's taken off. Five to 5,000 hertz, this is one big woofer. That's why you see the sound deadening foam on the walls. So this was one of the four tests that was important to do on the power system for the MSL rover. An important consideration for a radioisotope power system is to make certain that it does not disturb the instrumentation on the rover. And anything that produces an electric field, as a RPS unit does, also produces a magnetic field. So therefore, the MSL mission created a criteria for that magnetic field of no more than 25 nano Tesla. Very, very small. Smaller than the electric field that you typically have on the Earth. So we needed to come up with a device that could measure this really small field and make certain it was below 25 nano Tesla. In the next bay, I'd like to show you the third test. NASA is always concerned about how much something weighs. They're also concerned with exactly where the center of mass is. So when they put it on a spacecraft, when they do maneuvering thrusters, they will know how the spacecraft will react. So we measure the center of mass. We can do that to a little sphere about the size of 20 thousandths of an inch. I'd like to take you to the thermal vacuum chamber next. This is a thermal vacuum chamber. Its job is to provide an environment that simulates space. 
So we have a very impressive pumping system. We can pump down to pretty close to an absolute vacuum. We will then hang the power system in there and that will be as close as we can get to the coldest space. And then we will get the power reading from that. And that will be a reading we can supply to NASA so they can figure out how they're going to manage the power. This is the final test that you do before you ship it. Thanks for this tour, Steve. All right. Well, I'm glad you could come out. This is Nicole Stricker for Idaho National Laboratory.